I got a backup. I got a backup stream just in case uh, one of these doesn't work. Oh, Sony doesn't start for another four hours, dude. Three hours. Sorry. Sony starts in three hours. I mean, like I said, you look at you look at the Nvidia Shield, like uh, Wild Craze mentioned, and then you look at stuff like. Um, uh, PlayStation Now. They're fucking horrible. Okay, I got a backup stream. Alright, here we go. God damn it, now Mecca's made me fucking hungry and, it, and I can't... And I can't cook anything, I can't, I can't get takeout. Bastard, fuck you. God damn you, Mecca. Hold on. Uh, and that's streaming from my uh, Steam PC. I know, it gives me a lot, a, a, a lot to edit videos. Yeah, well, that's why I, that's why I stream off my PC. Oh, that's why, sorry, that's... Um, there is oh. magic in PC gaming. It says, don't just obey the rules. Rewrite them. It says... Don't just listen to stories. Inhabit them. It says, don't just accept the limits. Overclock beyond them. I really wish I fucking it could. It says, don't just play games. Revel in them. Unleash them. It says, seriously, is every game Battle Royale now? Or is it just me? I love From PC gaming. From to dungeons. From deep waters to deeper space. From solo quests to mass engagements, there is magic in PC gaming. Let's celebrate that magic together. This is the PC Gaming Show. I'm mainly here for the experience at the moment, and I'm just waiting to see all the hardware I can't buy. And now your host, Sean Plot. How's the sound coming for a few guys? Oh, hello, hello, hello to everyone online. Hello to everyone at the Will Turn. Welcome to the PC Gaming Show. Yes, yes. My name's Day9, I'm your host today. I am delighted to be here. We have a fantastic show for you this afternoon. First, to all of you who came out to the Will Turn, thanks for joining us. The Will Turn is just a beautiful venue here in Los Angeles, to all of you online on Twitch, thanks for joining us, to those co-streaming partners, hey as well, I'm talking to you, Dropped Frames, great to have you here, and of course, to all the wonderful sponsors that helped make the PC Gaming Show come back again for the fourth straight year. Yeah, because it yeah. isn't actually part of E3 properly. Good well, not, not really, I mean, it is, but... Now, I'm not the only host here this year. I have my co-op partner up in the balcony. It's Frankie Ward joining us today. How's it going, Frankie? Hey, Sean. I'm going to be up here in the balcony with a bunch of creative new PC games coming your way. Ooh, From Warfare's nice. latest update to some offbeat indie gems. Frankie, we are so excited for the show to get started. We have over 30 games we're going to be looking at across the That's next 90 minutes. All right, so let's fair get enough. Show them. Our very first title is from Coffee Stain Studios. Their game has absolutely massive construction as well as automation. Let's take a look at Satisfactory. All right then, let's get a widescreen of this. Like I said, I mean, with with the PC game, with the PC uh, li gaming live stream, I'm not really looking for anything because, I mean, not not to say in frame, but I don't think there's gonna be anything that uh, like is massive. Probably a lot of indie stuff as well. Um, I'm just streaming it because I want to watch all of it. I want to watch everything. And maybe there is a fucking gem in here that I that I go, oh my god, I want to play this. That's a construction, and you can build fucking chainsaws.
It, is it building? Is it building a city or just building big giant conveyor belts? No Man's Sky 2. No, it's not No Man's Sky 2. Oh, this looks like it has actual... Or maybe it is. <laughs> Ooh, we get to be parasites on another planet. Yeah. Then again, we're parasites on our own planet. Got be saying studios weren't the ones who did No Man's Sky, were they? One big giant conveyor belt. There you go. Satisfactory. And it, uh, he said it at the beginning, dude. Listen. It was satisfactory at the beginning. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director at Coffee Stain Studios. It's Oscar Gilsain. Come here. By the way, Oscar. you want to watch... Here's the thing. To the Just stage. out of the blue, you want to watch Thanks something fucking... Insane. Right Go and right watch Devolver, Vi Devolver Digital's E3 conference. Is, uh, it was about fucking nuts. Huge automated factories. Uh, so you play as a, an engineer that's been sent from Earth uh, mm -hmm. to this alien planet, and you're going to build this enormous machine. Uh, it's, it was hinted at at the end of the trailer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and to build that, you need a, a whole ton of parts, uh, which right. you need to build machines that will make them for you. So you'll start out pretty simple um, with a few machines. Yeah. And then you'll just expand and expand and expand until you find Oh yeah, Devolver Digital like just are fucking insane. I swear it's actually fucking I swear Devolver <laughs> Digital is actually know, run by Coke fiends. Haven't played this type of game. Can you give me an example of what producing a more advanced resource might look like? Right. Um, after a while you'll Yes, to we're turning a planet a planet into a factory. Computer, basically. Yeah. Uh, and you'll at that point you'll have some copper stuff set up, your wires and cables. But yeah. to make plastic you need to uh, get some oil. You need to go out and find this oil, yeah. uh, build some oil pumps and oil refineries, and, and set up a transport um, with self-driving vehicles between the outpost and your factory. Yeah, and I want to talk about that scale, because I, you know, there's a lot of games where you build a house or a small town. How much area are we talking about where all your factories will exist? Oh, th this, seems like uh, a big. Sounds numbers. like a uh, uh, the main part a building game we'll where your objective is just to build the biggest, more, most obnoxious factory you can, these and massive, like make resources and stuff. Yeah. Factory floor upon factory floor, but including the um, resources that you need. To Dude, I said that I would be up to doing yeah, toy soldiers to, uh, on my uh, channel. Uh, I do it on my. I, I do it as a let's play. I said I would. These types of games typically are top down. Why first person? We, we want it to feel like the, the player is the one building the stuff. Because yeah. it gives and the possibility you know, of VR build, as well. You built a bunch of stuff and you can see these enormous buildings, these structures towering yeah. above you. But also when you go out and explore, uh, you'll be the one, like, you go through the underbrush. You're still there, Gordy. I mean, in the trailer, it even looked like there's a lot more to explore, like different environments and biomes. Mm, yeah, yeah. The, the map is, uh, we made a point to make it big and varied. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's about uh, 30 square kilometers in yeah. size, so it's kind of enormous. Wow. I mean, it looks like an interesting like time sync, if you if you like building there. shit. multiplayer work? Oh, it's a, it's a co-op game. So you'll basically you'll awesome. start up a server and play with your friends. Great. Now tell us how do we Let's get start our from the beginning. This game. So we got a close to alpha uh, planned in the coming months. Uh, so you can sign up for uh, for the alpha at satisfactorygame.com. Uh, and yeah, then you'll know. Well, great, Oscar. Thanks for joining me on stage once again. That is satisfactorygame.com. Now, up need to make a list of games to do better as far. Our very first indie title of the day. We do indeed, Sean, because here's something we love about the PC platform. It's such fertile ground for creative ideas from small teams. Neo Cab is an emotional survival game set in the future about gig labor, tech disruption, and the experience of being a driver for hire. Perhaps the last of your kind. From the brand new indie studio Chance Agency, let's watch the first gameplay trailer for Neo Cab. Neo Cab. World exclusive.
Okay, it's colorful as shit, so I already like it. Seriously. Fucking hell. Uber in the future. Ah, uh, it's Neo Cab. Looks interesting. Stay human. I will fucking try. Now, our next game, believe it or not, is in the Battle Royale genre. Oh, Of course, fuck it's E3 it. 2018, what do you expect? We have several Battle Royale games we're going to be talking about today because the Battle Royale format is very simple and very flexible. Players and easy. Play in an ever-shrinking space until there's one last standing. So developers have already been doing all kinds of different explorations of what this could possibly be. And our very first Battle Royale game that we'll be introducing today has up to 1,000 concurrent players. It's from Automaton Games. Let's look at Maverick's Proving Grounds. Yay! What about a Royale? Uh, they're all, they're most likely all going to be copy and paste until someone does something so goddamn different they, it actually stands out and catches the attention of people. Yeah, 1,000 concurrent players. Oh, so we have, we, does this have special powers that you can see through walls and blow them up? Destructible environments would be good. No, oh, I heard you. Yeah, we're gonna catch my attention. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Well, as it was said about Call of Duty, no longer the trend setter, the trend follower. Wow, this looks pre-rendered to shit. Mavericks. Uh, me on the that name has that the, the word Maverick has been ruined. Games, Not by this, by Pops. someone else. James, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, I want to immediately ask, what about Prove, or excuse me, Maverick's Proving Grounds distinguishes itself from other Battle Royale games? Yeah, well, as you said, it's a very popular formula, and, yeah. you know, that last man standing uh, kind of game type is incredibly compelling by itself, yeah. but Mavericks is really about depth. You know, we've already talked about 400 players before, and we're sort of super excited today to talk about our five-man squad mode being 1,000 players, uh, but really it's... It's about depth as well. It's about the fact that yeah. that environment is even a bigger step. The simulation and yeah. those elements sort of combining together. Yeah, I, I want to zoom in right on the let's one hear about that depth aspect. How does that really all players isn't the depth from the say hundred that we're typically used to? Mm. Well, it's really about combining scale with the depth of simulation. So the fact that together what you actually have is a landscape that means you're making decisions off a lot more information. Yeah, I mean, because you hinted at that twice now. Like, what do you mean by there's a lot more information in the environment for players to process? Thank so you. To take a con concrete example, right? So 
let's say a player's walking through the map, they'll be leaving footprints, they'll be displacing foliage, like the oh, grass okay. bending. Uh, but you know, siege style gameplay in houses, so that's like a lot of destruction systems that sort of together make the map yeah, much more of a dynamic environment. It's like a recent history of who could have been here. No, they I mean, didn't. Square Enix didn't. What more is in store for Maverick's Proving Grounds? I understand that this is a lot more outgame features than someone might expect. Yeah, so it's right. Okay, so it's got game almost like a tracking system where people can leave footprints and shit, and you can follow them. Draw from the MMORPG side of things. It's really enough world, to steal my moped. You know, so it's it's got a persistent game type side to it too. Yeah, but really, it's about bringing this all together. Oh no, they showed Kingdom Hearts three, but they didn't show now, Final Fantasy seven. To find out more. Well, we've just launched our site right now, so if you're right. interested in signing up for the closed beta, uh, you can do that now at mavericks.gg slash closed hyphen beta. And uh, actually, if you register this week, you'll get special in-game content for free from E3. Yeah, awesome. and we have, it, that was the like, biggest disappointment of uh, Square Enix. Up, so right on. That will give you some beta access, but cool. I'm sure there are a lot more people than that on the stream, so quickly do that if you're interested in. Well, James, thanks so much for joining us. Once again, that's maverick.gg. Our very next game helps showcase the extraordinary power of modders. Frankie, tell us about it. It does indeed, Sean. On PC, we don't just play what's given to us. We mod games to make our own experiences. And for many developers, modding is a way to turn a hobby into a career. The that is true. The is the perfect example. It's a standalone game that's a reimagining of a wildly successful mod. In fact, the first mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award. Ooh. For the first time ever. Here's gameplay from the Forgotten City. Oh, I I don't I I like mods. Some of my favorite games are mods. Cry of Fear is a fucking Half Life mod, and I love that game. I am so sorry you had to find me like this. Oh, it's a horror game. That you'll suffer the same fate I did. Is it? I've spent a lifetime in this place. An ancient underground city. Its existence long forgotten. Searching for a way out. All well, I found is a window. Well the thing the is, Final Fantasy VII's also gonna be episodic. One person here commits a sin. I hope they Everyone fucking change that. Will die. I tried to set things right, but whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. It's all up to you now. Back, investigate, talk to everyone, help them out if it'll win their trust. Bend the rules as far as you can. Figure out who's responsible for this. Huh. Maybe you can do what I never could. Save these people. Save yourself. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Okay, you have my interest, Forgotten City. That, Coming that's, up on the PC gaming show. That has my interest. What's next for Killing Floor Two? Oh Christ! <laughs> an unannounced game from Tripwire Interactive. And now your host, Sean Plot. Yeah, the Forgotten City has my Our next fucking game interest. Is a blast from the past. It's not a sequel or prequel or remake, but rather an entirely new game altogether. Let's take a look at Stardox. Star Control Origins. Why does that name sound familiar? Long ago, the singularity formed. Its creators uplifted into something beyond our understanding. These beings, now known as the Lexites, left Earth, traveling to multiple planets in our solar system. I was like mystery games like that with uh, the Forgotten City. We are here. Welcome to Star Control, a state-of-the-art international space agency tasked with the exploration of our solar system and the defense of Earth. Here reside the world's brightest minds and greatest technology, brought together by a strong curiosity to discover the unknown. Help us pioneer the future. Join today.
What does it look like? Star Control has accelerated the construction of our new modular deep solar system vessel specifically for this mission. It's the fastest, most expensive ship humanity has ever made, Captain. Doesn't look it. Viscosity Officer Windu of the Tyron. This drive had evidently received traces I mean, of your radio broadcasts themselves. Honestly, I want a fucking Starship Troopers game. Hell, I let's played one. But it's like, yeah, it's like an exploration game where. Ah, oh, okay, I see. I see where they're going. What they're going with. Fucking tiny ass planets. Probably going to be procedurally generated. Yeah, because humans are apparently the goddamn center of the fucking universe. It looks interesting. It does. Joining me to talk about Star Control is the director of production at Star Doc, Patrick Shaw. Thanks for joining me on stage today, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So now just tell us straight up, what is Star Control all about? So Star Control is an open universe action RPG. You can visit dozens of aliens, hundreds of different stars, thousands of different unique planets, and you can land on each and every one of them. And when you're driving around the planets, you can jump over canyons, uh, blast critters, and then you can venture out into the solar system and do ship to ship combat with hostile aliens. And I, I want to ask, since I know that the story <laughs> is part of this sky. Game, with it being open world, how do you make sure that the story still stays as the focus for the player? Yeah, so we're really excited about the story that we've prepared for Star Control. It's funny, it's creative, um, but also has some dark, uh, sinister side to it. However, what we're very proud and very excited about is we have an infinite universe. That is, we are fully simulating the entire universe at all times. So even if you're on some huh. podunk little moon in the corner of the universe, the aliens are still moving around the universe, doing their own thing, exploring and interacting with each other. So it's not just like at a planet, there's the same town whenever you visit it. It depends on how the simulation has driven it forward. Right, exactly. So right, okay, the, so this, uh, infinite universe is the not procedurally generated, then I'm guessing. My adventure to the larger open galaxy. That's awesome. Now, I know modding is going to be a big part of Star Control Origins. How does modding work? So what's your favorite science fiction show? Probably Firefly. Yeah, so what would you think of making Firefly season two? Oh, Shit, Christ. That's a lot of pressure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're putting me on the spot on no. stage right now, yeah. We have, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the combat, um, though. Anyways, in Star Control Origins, you can create your own ships, your own planets, your own galaxies. You can package up your adventures and share them with your friends online. So someone else can take care of Firefly season two. That's up to you. Now, the last thing I want to ask about is how multiplayer works. Right. So in the game, we have ship-to-ship -ship combat, and that turned about to be so popular in our early testing. They're like, we should make this our, it, a separate gameplay mode. So we did. We called it Fleet Battles. It's so going to be a Star Trek mod. Ships, oh, no, that is going to be a Star Trek mod, I'm sure. Part, you attach different weapons and defenses, and then you go online to play them. You can either play local multiplayer, two people on the same machine. Oh, uh, what the fuck? I played a game recently that actually reminds me of that. Where can people go to pick up Star Control Origins? Well, right now, Star Control Origins is available for pre-order on GOG and Steam. Well, lovely. Guys, definitely be sure to head over to StarControlGame.com and check them out on Steam and GOG as well. And one more thing, we are happy to announce at the PC Gamer Show that uh, Star Control Origins is launching on September 20th, 2018. Look forward oh, to no. September 20th. TF3. No, no, if we're gonna, no, we're gonna get Half-Life 3. That's what's gonna be announced here. Yeah? Now, our next game was PC Gamer's favorite game from E3 last year. It is Hunt Showdown from Crytek. Let's take a look at what's coming for Hunt Showdown just after E3. Uh-oh. Crytek. Uh, you want to talk about a struggling studio? Yeah, I remember seeing this. I didn't... I honestly thought it dropped off the face of the earth. To find her. Yeah, I do remember seeing someone about this, but I never, I never heard anything about it afterwards. I 
and showdown. I am here with Guy from Skydance, who's here to tell me why fighting in massive mech suits is not about to go out of fashion any time soon. Guy, now Hellfire, in fact, sorry, Archangel, was originally a single-player narrative game, but Hellfire, this new edition, what changes is that going to make? Well, players really loved the single-player narrative, but they all kept telling us the same thing. They said, we really want it multiplayer, and we want it off-rails. And we kind of thought, that's a completely different game. <laughs> But let's get yeah, a shot. it is. Uh, and so we got a crack team together. Uh, they but does it have single really player? Special. We got four mechs. Maps. Yes, we got mechs. Six different mechs. Tons of weapons where you could just blast through the environment and other mechs alike. And it's really just an amazing experience. You can zip around in your mech. You can tower over others. It's just something special. Can right. I make it? Right now. Can I make it massive? Early access. So you just said we can try it right now, but you've got the full version launching soon, right? Correct. Yeah, it's coming out in July 17th. Uh, but you could try it right now if you want an early access. Help us iron out the kinks and uh, break some mechs along the process. That's uh, why you have betas. Out, I think people at home can see, Guy. But as a heavy mech woman, I can't wait for you to be my light mech wingman in that 2v2 PvP. Somebody is so going, to, take a close is going to be really tired tomorrow. No shit, man. And I still got... I still got Nintendo tomorrow. How big can these me mechs be? And is it a third-person idea? Big giant mechs. Oh, it's a first person. Big mechs smacking the shit out of each other. Damn. I get that worst case. I'll have to postpone waking up. Yeah, I might need to wake up a little late. Looking forward to for quite some time. It's from the makers of Sherlock Holmes, and it's a delightful looking Lovecraftian mystery. It's called The Sinking City, and joining me Ooh, to talk about Lovecraft. it is the community manager at Frogwares, Sergei Oganisian. Welcome, Sergei. Thanks for joining me today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've earned a handshake. Yeah, you Welcome nailed that pronunciation. Looks like love 10, 12 so meters tall. You would know, Mecca. Right away, the Sinking City. You know, there's a lot of open-world, third-person type games. What oh, makes cool. the Sinking City different from what a player? Nah, they didn't look anything well, like Power I Rangers. The Sinking City is an open-world action investigation game inspired by Lovecraft, and we believe that these three elements already make the game pretty unique. And you know, when I say that you can be a detective in a in a world in a supernatural world full of mystery and you know cosmic fear, like I really mean it because investigations are really at the core of the Sinking City. Yeah, I mean, I know. There's a hmm. lot of games in the open world genre that are focused on action, but you say investigation is at the core. What, what are investigation mechanics? What does it look like? So the first thing you should know right off the bat is that we are not going to offer any hand holding for the player. We will not give you any Yay. objectives in your diary or, you know, markers on the map telling you. That sounds old go, school, doesn't it? Do no, no hand holding. To figure that out. Instead, yeah. we will give you information, you know, hints, evidence, like clues. <laughs> are we going to see the clues? Maybe. People to talk to suspects to question. And we will ask you in return to use your wits and your intuition to, you know, experiment with your findings, you know, maybe like find... All Lovecraftian games are going to have Cthulhu. What you also know is that finding... Oh, hello, Cthulhu. ...not only help you understand what's going on and, you know, uh, yeah. get a better understanding of the world and its people, but it will also help you maybe change the course of your investigation. You know, you mentioned the world itself. I mean, the footage that I've seen through the years has just been absolutely beautiful. Talk to me about the world that we're in and what investigation is at the core. So the game takes place in this fictional city of Oakmont in the state of Massachusetts. You know, the city which is flooded. There is a terrible disaster going on, which has claimed like thousands of lives. And that was also, bizarre. like, it seems like it awakened frightening monsters, which now yeah. roam the streets of Oakmont. You know, people that live in the city, they are very different, like different social classes, uh, gangs, cultists, poor people, rich people, but they are all yeah. united by fear. You know, they are all afraid, maybe except for the cultists, of course. They are all afraid that, uh, you know, for their lives. So it's an investigation the game. You know, might monsters. actually give us a lot. We actually want to understand what's going on. We want to understand what lies be behind this ostensibly supernatural uh, of plot. And what's even funny is that while everybody is afraid, nobody wants to leave. But this is kind of a different story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, we've talked that a little bit about the story world and how it's inspired by Lovecraft. What about the game mechanics? You've mentioned the sanity mechanic in the past. Indeed, we do have a sanity mechanic which, which directly impacts the gameplay. Uh, that sounds know, like eternal Andrew darkness. Starts, when he sees like something supernatural, something disturbing, mm -hmm. or even when he's making a choices in the story which he's not comfortable with making, uh, you know, he will begin to lose his sanity. Uh, 
he's like, he will start to have hallucinations, he will start to hear distorted sounds, yeah. which will allow the player to understand that something is actually going wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, step back and do something about that. As of right now, we're still... Yeah, it says like Eternal Darkness, and no one has done it since Eternal Darkness. ...impact on the gameplay and impact on the story. Since we're almost out of time, I still just have to ask, what are the sweet monsters that we're going to get to see in the game? Oh, we have different kinds of monsters. We have different kinds of archetypes, you know, with different abilities. And, you know, we actually give you tools. The game is not about fighting monsters. Investigation is the right. core of the game. But we give you tools to defend yourself. So we give you weapons, we give you skills, we give you even so certain, like, traps. In return, we ask you that yeah. you make a decision, because the game is about making a decision. Uh, ammunition is scarce, and you will have to adjust your tactics accordingly. So, I know a lot of people have all sorts of questions about what the game is like. Where can they go to find out more information? There's two games uh, so up now that really have my more, attention. You can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this is where we post our updates regularly. Facebook, The Sinking City Game. YouTube, uh, Frogwares. Uh, so, go there. So funny, and, like, The Forgotten City and The Sunken City actually excited. have my interest. Let's see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me on stage. Uh, should I take notes of these? Sinking City. Hello. Now, our next game is a PC title that has only gotten better over the last few years, and I'm always excited to hear what they have in store. Frankie is up on the balcony with the developers of Warframe. Talk to me. Frankie. Oh, shit. Well, Here we, we go. We all know the PC is home to some of the most devoted communities in gaming, and one of the best undoubtedly belongs to Warframe. Last year, the game got its first open world update, Planes of Eidolon, and the next epic cinematic quest is called The Sacrifice. And we've got the exclusive launch trailer for you. God damn it. Writing down these names. <laughs> Don't want to follow these. Alright, the Forgotten City and the Sunken City. I don't want. It won't bring him back. Sacrifice coming June. Megan Everett, community manager at Digital Extremes, joins me now. Megan, tell I need me to pick up Warframe because I so I never did. Is the latest installment I think. of our cinematic quest. It continues a story that we started in the Second Dream, continued with the War Within, and then Apostasy Prologue. So at the end of last year, we kind of shattered some hearts and uh, left them with a bit of a plot twist. And I'm not going to spoil it for people who want to maybe catch up. Uh, but what I can say is that obviously from the trailer that you saw. The wait for Umbra, the three-year wait, the Umbra Warframe is finally over. Uh, the creepy guy at the end of the trailer there, Ballas, plays a pretty big role in this quest. And uh, again, not going to spoil a lot, but I can say that it's coming this week on PC. And I need to play Warframe. You're currently waiting. Well, for, as well as the update, you're working towards Tenacon right now. Yes, so it's going to be another big year for us, and I'm really excited for it. Well, let's take a look at last year's event to get an idea of what Tenacon is all about. Yeah. Oh. What do you think the mega reveal at Tenno Live is going to be? Can you tell me you think about this this Umber thing that's maybe going on or whatever? Warframe has dedicated fans. Like oh, for fuck's sake. Whole new direction for Warframe and all this. You got all these other games coming out, but this one's free. When's 2018 happening? Get it started. Time of Life 2018. Ooh, July 7th. Given that the community knows you as Auntie Megan, oh God. it must be huge for you to be at Tenacon. Tenacon is really special for really everyone that works at Digital Extremes. The developers pour their heart and soul into what we Oh, I better black out that face, otherwise I'm probably gonna, I'm me, probably gonna get into trouble. It's literally like the best day of my entire career. Uh, uh angry Joe. Uh, at home is watching. Um, but last year, when we did the Planes of Eidolon, you know, open world expansion reveal, uh, Rev and I were actually doing that as a live demonstration in front of everyone. And we had practiced it for months. 
and it went as flawlessly as we could have ever hoped for. And we actually, like, as people were cheering, it's pitch black on stage, Rev and I look at each other and we just kind of fist pump and both started crying because we didn't crash the demonstration. Uh, so if you, wa <laughs> if you watch Tenno Live this year, if you're there, uh, you can definitely probably- Yeah, I need to get into Warframe. I need, I need to write that down. I need to write down Warframe really again. So basically- And put tissues, multiple right? fucking bring exclamation marks next to it that I really do need to play it. There will be some tears probably. But um, if you can't get to Tenacon because unfortunately it is sold out, how can you watch it online? So on twitch.tv slash Warframe, you can definitely check it out. And uh, PC Gamer is also hosting as well on their Facebook and Twitter. And you get free stuff by watching Twitch? You do. So if you want to link your uh, Warframe account to your Twitch account, and all you have to do is watch and you get some free stuff. Fantastic. So that's free shit. from July 7th. There you and go, everybody. To There's a way to get some free shit. PC Gamers Twitch channel and the Facebook page. Thank you, Auntie Megs. Sean, it's over to you. Thank you, Frankie, and thank you, Warframe. The next name is one I grew up with, Sega. They've become a prolific uh -oh. publisher of Japanese games known for their fully featured ports, especially beloved by this guy on the left. <laughs> Sega's bringing shining resonance both to PC and console the same day, and Shenmue is going to be coming later this year. They have all sorts of games coming up. Really? Shenmue's actually... Sega's got in store. Shenmue's actually fucking coming out, is it? I'll be fucking, I'll be, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Valkyrie oh, Chronicles, Bayonetta, that's already out. Vanquish, already out. I own both of them, and I fucking, I absolutely fucking love both of them. Ooh, Shenmue 1, is this Shenmue 1 and 2? Yes, it is. I get into that. Rising Resonance. World Premiere Announcements. Yakuza! Oh, I need to play the Yakuza games as well. So many games! Bawami. Akiwami. I need to start all the way from the beginning of Yakuza. Valkyrie Chronicles 4. I don't know why, but all this time I've been thinking I really want a Skies of Arcadia. Yeah, I totally need to get into the Yakuza series. Yakuza 0. 0-0, zero, zero, apparently. Alright, cool. Uh, I doubt we're going to get a Vanquish 2. you got to remember, that's Platinum Games still. Right well, it's Sega, but Platinum Steam Games made it what it August. is. We hope you've been enjoying the show thus far. We have so much more great stuff to come. Let's see what's coming up at this year's PC Gaming Show. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show, a new publisher reveals three new games, and the first ever gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. Fuck yes! And now your host, Sean Plot. Fuck yes! Finally, fucking gameplay. And I'm back. Our next guest is a regular here at the PC Gaming Show, having attended all four years. Frankie's with him up in the balcony. It's Tripwire. Sean, if you are anything like wire. me, you probably need to let off steam every once in a while. I and guess Overkill's walking dead. to do it than by kicking back and tearing up a load of monstrous enemies. It's kind of either that or pushing the office photocopier out of the window, and I, for one, prefer the option that keeps me and everyone here in a job. With that in mind, I am thrilled to welcome Bill Monk from Killing Floor 2 back to E3. All right, Hi, tell us what you got planned you. for the got fucking future, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen to that applause. Please tell me you got they good shit. all want to know what the latest from Tripwire and Killing Floor 2 is. Yep, we've been really busy working on Killing Floor, and we got, some, uh, we got four major updates that are coming out this year. The first one we dropped in March, and we're getting ready to drop the next one 
really it's soon. Coming tomorrow, but what's involved? Yeah, so we're bringing the summer sideshow back, but this time we're mixing circus freaks with steampunk in a really fun, exciting way. And we have a really cool new uh, system that we're adding. It's called the weapon upgrade system. Uh, we've, I've already been playing that shit. Three different weapons that we have in our game, and each one you can uh, upgrade it and make it viable for late play. So it really adds a lot of creativity to your loadout. So I'm really excited to get that in people's hands. Yeah, I've already so been playing that up there. Your boy gun's big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the only disappointment that I have over. with it Let's take is... Let's a look at the trailer for Treacherous Skies Summer Shy Show. Okay, so... Here's the thing. The only big disappointment I have with this update, and I doubt they're gonna fit. I doubt. I doubt it's gonna be any different when it comes out. When you upgrade the weapons, the weapons do not change visually. They look the exact same. I would have like at least liked to see something. Like for example, the first fucking uh, the first uh, commando gun. Uh, maybe at level three has a fucking scope or something. I don't know, some like visual indication that this has been upgraded. Well, something's very safe, yes. You helped me escape that fray at my beloved Steam Land, but now I need your help once again. I've got to get to my island in the channel. Now, now, listen up. I don't know how, but these blasted circus freaks followed us on board. I think it's time to put on a show. Yes. Please show us, Mrs. Foster. Fuck them. Blasted traitors! Careful lads! They're tough! Even removing the head will put these rebellious robots down! <laughs> but take heart, lads and lasses! I have invented some new toys! The Doomstick! Four barrels of the love that gun! The static striker! They are awesome! Finally I have an opportunity to beat the shit out of motherfuckers! Yet to try it. There's a last minute addition to the crew. Let's this woman go. Team Mrs. Foster negotiated her way on board and is set on giving Zen like the angry the business. Ah, it's good to see Mrs. Foster back. We'll see you on the airship. Fossey, joke for you. Optician says my eyes are okay. I say, then how do you explain my husband? <laughs> Now, Ouch. as is tradition, the content that you just saw will I love be available too. tomorrow, including a free weekend for PC this weekend. Definitely check it out with Killing Floor 2. But that's not all that Tripwire has. I have the president Seriously. of Tripwire himself, John Gibson. You on should stage. try out Killing Floor 2 on that free yeah. weekend. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Now, I understand that Tripwire is stepping into also doing publishing. What does that entail? That's right. So, Sean, it's really challenging for developers right now with the thousands of games that are coming out every year. Yeah. It's really hard to get noticed. Mm -hmm. And then you have the traditional publishing deals. So we're giving developers fair deals. We're going to be helping them rise above that noise so they can get noticed. And because of our experience developing our own games and publishing our Is own that games, we're going to help them with marketing, funding, mentoring, feedback. That looks to help like, them um... Yeah, I mean, the game that we have on screen is one of those games. This is Road Redemption. That is right. I'm happy to announce Was it that Road we're Rash? going to be publishing Road Redemption. We're going to be helping them... The Sega game where you could beat the Steam, shit out of all the, um, all the motorcyclists. Now, I know today looks like it. World exclusive new game hasn't been announced we yet. We do. Nobody knows. Or we roll the trailers. What if you give me a little bit of a tease? Yeah, so... We're working with the team at Blindside Games, mm -hmm. uh, and they're led by Alex Quick. Fucking knew it was Road oh, yeah, Rash. Right. So if you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the original Killing Floor mod, which Tripwire worked with Alex to bring commercial. And then Alex went off, assembled his own team, made the yeah. game Depth, which was sharks and humans fighting each other. Very, very successful. And now it's come full circle. We're working with Alex again, and we're going to bring his all-new game to market. Well, let's oh. take a look at it's it good to right know. now. World exclusive new upcoming game from Tripwire. Oh, it's good to know that there's still a good working relationship between the two teams. Always good to hear. It was, it's always good to hear about that stuff. But what's this dude got working? What's this dude been working on then? Apart from depth. Close your eyes and imagine a place where the sun is bright and the beaches are white. A place filled with southern charm where the water is as warm as the welcome. So come feel the wind in your sails. Kick back and relax. 
Enjoy the local cuisine. Uh oh, Your more shocks. Is waiting for you here on the Gulf Coast. Oh Jesus Christ! Please tell me you get to play as the shark. Maneatergame.com now to book your vacation. It's the sequel to Jaws Unleashed we've never wanted. <laughs> so, so, hey, John. So you but now I want. The shark. You are the shark. <laughs> this is an open world action RPG where you play as a shark. <laughs> or as we like to call it, a shark PG. Oh, nice. Okay, so. Terrible. So do you like upgrade and improve the shark? Is there like skill trees? You do. There is a shark skill tree. Oh, really? What the fuck? <laughs> there is a full single player campaign. You eat your way through it. You get bigger teeth. You can jump out of the water and snatch people off piers. It sounds like Jaws Unleashed. I, I didn't realize this was a power fantasy I needed so badly. <laughs> Now, where can people go to get more information about it? They can go to maneatergame.com. All right. I what do you mean you you don't even make here. them this bad? What do you mean? That's maneatergame.com. That looks fun as shit. Com. John, thanks so much for joining me on stage. And once My again, pleasure. all the content that Tripwire. All right, gotta add Maneater to the list. I paced earlier about Killing Floor 2 and Road Redemption will be playable here at E3. Definitely be sure to check it out. Coming up next, Frankie has a whole slew. <laughs> Shark. All oh, right. Okay. Games. Yeah. Yeah. Frankie. Cheers, Sean. Man eater looking tasty there, and I can't believe they named a game after my favorite weekend activity. You could have it said your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card. Gaming, and next up is a brand new publisher revealing three games for the very first time, releasing one of them. Behave yourselves, audience, today. So let's take a look. You know, it would have gone over much better if she said my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card, Man eater. That's true. Uh, I'm going to assume one of them is a pixel art game. Untitled. Amazing name. At least they own it. <laughs> the Manny to bug OP ability for a weak monster. So uh, didn't it get didn't it get banned from tournament? Why does it look like uh, Cry is in the background? refereeing the whole fucking thing. See, when I see that face, I just think of fucking Cry, the Let's Player. I don't know, I mean, the art style looks fun, but it's like a turn-based RPG. I got dark really goddamn fucking quickly. Oh, don't even know what the fuck to make at that. Ah, there we go. Here's the pixel game we expect for PC. Warning. Ah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of over games like this. I over hyper violent 
pixel games. I mean, there's some that are, are fun, like the, the Hotline Miami series, and then you've also got uh, Bro Force, which is just absolute fucking cheese fun, but... I don't know, I mean, there's obviously people who will play that, but that's, uh, I don't know, that's just not something for me. All these games look like must-plays. And Overwhelm, the final game of the bunch, is available on Steam right now with a special launch discount. So make sure you check that out after the show. And if you're at uh -huh. T3 this week, head over to the PC Gamer corner of the Facebook booth inside the South Hall to give Overwhelm a try. Right. Next up, it's time for us all to take a holiday and where better than a virtual resort with some truly spectacular wildlife. Back again this year, our friends of the show, Frontier Developments, with a unique take on the park management genre. I am, of course, talking about Jurassic World Evolution. Oh, the long awaited game is out heard about this. and lets you build your own dinosaur stuffed tourist trap. What could possibly go wrong? Unleash the gold blum! That was. Fucking awful. Please never do that again. You think that things are going to turn out differently, huh? Oh, she... Well, the ones before you did, too. She went wrong. It because is... they believed that they Jeff were Goldblum. in control. And control... Well, here's the thing. Humanity is desperate for it. We are seduced by it. Deceived by the illusion of it. Really? But we never really possess it. Because if there's anything that chaos theory has taught us, it's that nature is on its own course. And when we interfere... Well, IGN are not really the biggest, uh, reliable source. Chaos destroys them. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the scope and power of what we're up against and still believing that we can win. Does game radar game ra know, however, games radar gave it a four out of five? Predict. Game evolution says holy fucking so shit it's a dinosaur. For that game. Our next title is from Insomniac, who've been making amazing games for years, and they're going to try to take their PC Gamer gives it a 71%. How do you make an open world game in VR? Let's take a look at their upcoming game, Stormland. So, I mean, I guess it comes down to personal preference. Oh, stop showing me this shit. It's just reminding me more and more that I really want a goddamn VR headset. God fucking damn it, stop it. This is what I mean. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's one. That's one idea. Oh, well, just give it a try if you want. Did he really deserve that? Oh shit, Johnny Five really is alive. Hey, thank, thanks Marcos MVP for that host. Much appreciated, man. Sorry, I don't have the alerts on because I'm just streaming it for uh, I'm just streaming it for the viewing audience at the moment. Uh, what was that? Uh, wait for Sony. They gotta be refresh. Gotta make a refresh for the PSVR. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. I'd wanna. I kind of want to get an actual VR headset. So, how are you doing today, Marcos? Here's Johnny. I, I want to get like a Vive or something, if if it's at all possible. There's just not a lot on the 
there's just not a lot on the PSVR to give me interest. And that is not the stream, that's this game. Yeah, I'm going to be streaming that too. Uh, but that isn't for another two hours. So I got to stay up till 2 fucking a.m. for it. And after the Sony conference, I will be setting up a uh, my Discord to chat to people about what they think. So if you're going to be here for that, Marcos, um, you can jump into my Discord and uh, join in the conversation about what happens during the Sony press conference in two hours. Ah, so it's not Oculus Rift uh, exclusive, it seems. I hope I don't fall asleep. Believe me, I'm feeling the same fucking way. It'll get released for Joining HTC Vive as well. Stormland is the chief creative officer at Insomniac Games. Join me in welcoming Chad Desern. I mean, I, I need to try out VR before I... Uh, because hey, I don't know if it's going to give me motion sickness, but I'm getting motion sickness I'll easy. Right away and ask, what is this game all about? Well, in Stormland, you play as an android gardener. And uh, an entity called the Tempest uproots I'm your planning on it after this. And shatters your android body. So you've got to travel to a civilization above the Thunderheads to repair yourself and save your friends. And I want to ask what open world means in VR. Well, for us, it's about giving the player the ability to explore the world freely with a set of Android movement abilities that are designed to yeah. give you complete agency. So yeah, basically, jetpack and sticky hands. Work in any VR I looks of it. Yeah, well, um, in Stormland, you can do things like fly just above the slipstream with your outstretched Android hands. Yeah. Um, you can shoot a laser into that was the all, cloud that surface. That was gorgeous. And make a ramp, kick off of that. Um, climb up a cliffside, like literally launching yourself with your synthetic android strength, and then like push off and glide back down using your hands to control your descent. It's, it's massive freedom of movement, yeah. Oh, we got that, That's it. It's this set of mechanics well. that are designed together to work fluidly so that um, movement feels exhilarating yeah. and uh, you, you can kind of take the world at your own pace with it. I'm curious why VR for this type of title? There, there are a series of things that we're doing with Stormland that, that we could only do in VR. Um, it's about the, the expressiveness yeah, head of movement. having tracked head and hands yeah. and how we use that for combat, how we use it for movement, um, even things like scavenging technology to attach it to your body. Like you look down, you Ooh. get a new piece of tech and you, you attach it right into your <laughs> arm. And then, you know, suddenly you I have like the that. ability to on the spot electricity upgrading yeah, yourself or all kinds of different cool Android abilities. I mean, the, the art is just beautiful. It ain't got a grappling hook. I wonder if you can Zero talk a little bit about the world and what it means for it to be ever changing. Yeah, that's, that, that's a really good question. So that entity called the Tempest rearranges everything every single week so that we present the player with new playgrounds of movement and, and combat and scavenging. Yeah. And you never know what you're going to discover. So every single island you find yeah. has the potential to ha hide an enemy stronghold or a network of underground caverns or brand new tech to That's awesome. Well, yeah. someone now, just I found. Ask, where can we go for more information? Well, um, How can, big is uh, the world? I want to know uh, that. He watching. says it's open uh, world the, uh, and you could pretty much go anywhere with, with your robot tools. VR, How big is the actual map or the world? I'd like to know that. Looking forward to it. Thanks for joining me, Chad. Once again, oculus.com slash stormland for more information. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous looking indie title. It really is, Sean, because next up we've got a first look at a new game from publisher Raw Fury, a neo-noir detective drama featuring a Paris cabbie who finds himself drawn into a world of crime. Sacre Roddy Bleu. Yes, I speak French. I there can't wait for this one, so let's take a ride with the trailer. All right, let's see what the trailer's got for us then. I get some coffee after this uh, conference. And yes, yeah, so everybody, by the way, thank you for everybody who came over from and stayed from Marcos' stream. It's much appreciated. This is my first uh, Controller Byte live stream of the E3 conference, and I'm hoping it's not going to be my last. I will be doing it next year. But aside from this, I do actually live stream video games, believe it or not. It's a revolutionary concept of being a variety streamer.
apparently. But I do appreciate everybody coming over and sticking with us. And yo, Chris, can I get a can I get a shout out for Marcos MVP, please? Fucking uh, fucking lovely son of a bitch. So, uh, uh, put him on the list. <laughs> she speaks as much French as the Looney Tunes. Nah, even the Looney Tunes. Well, mainly the Animaniacs know about more French. Night call. See, the thing is, I swear I just saw something similar to this in Neo Cab. Night call. If you like that last game, you'll definitely love our next one. It's from the exact same publisher, Raw Fury. It's an open world narrative focused game with an incredible art style. Let's take a look at Sable. Fuck my life. Sec everybody, I'm multitasking at the moment. So I'll do it myself. There we go. Anybody who is on my side of the stream, go and check that lovely bastard out. And I gave the fucking wrong name. I'm a fucking tool. Well, go and check out Mecca. Go and check out Mecca as well. He's a lovely fucker as well. And also go and check out this man. There we go. Finally, go and check out both of them, man. They're both awesome people. Well, I like this. I like the uh, shell shaded graphics. By the way, I'll say this, sir, uh, Marcos. You missed an interesting game earlier called The Forgotten City, and uh, another game called Man Eater, which looks promising. It's it looks like an updated, better refined version of Jaws Unleashed. Not a problem, Mecca. Not a problem at all, my man. Sable. Looks good. It looks beautiful. You can sell me on some, on graphics Sable sometimes, and that's one of them. Pretty much the entire core development team on stage. It's Daniel Feinberg and Greg Kithriotis. I want to immediately ask, what kind of game is Sable? What can we expect? Uh, Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's, so it's journey. <laughs> a game about combat or about leveling up. It's a game about solitude and so not journey. exploration. <laughs> uh, you play as Sable, a girl leaving her home uh, to explore this mm -hmm. world filled with monumental architecture, fallen spaceships, and you'll travel around on your hover bike learning about the people, the culture, and the history of this uh, world. Sometimes hey, I, you can I, I sell me on graphics. I think this art that looks is fucking amazing. gorgeous. Where's the origins of this? So we were really heavily inspired by the clear lines style of French and Belgian comics, mm -hmm. as well as Japanese animation, um, particularly Studio Ghibli. So um, we really want to feel our players to feel the same sense of wonder that you get from watching one of their films. And so from yeah. the very beginning, we, we knew that we really needed to nail the visual style. And those uh, look gorgeous. Yeah, we put a lot of time and sort of effort into our rendering system, uh, and yeah, we're really pleased to be able to show it to everyone. Yeah, and I mean, I know that you two consist of most of the core development, the the art and the programming. What about the music that was in that trailer? Yeah, so that was a new track by Japanese Breakfast. Oh, yeah, the T-shirt. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, right. So she, uh, Michelle, um, she is doing the soundtrack for the game. Um, that is nice as well. Right now. Uh, it's incredible to have well, I mean, it, it right, so to let me add so Sable to the list trailer, of games. Like I say, so uh, really very regular about few updating, games can sell me on graphics. Laws, that one sold me on graphics. With the development. Where can people go to find more? Uh, so they can go to our Twitter account, ShedworksReg and ShedworksDan, or to SableGame.com. Lovely gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, the name of the game is Sable. Our next title is one that has been in development, even showing up in our very first PC gaming show. It's Cloud Imperium Games still hard at work on their title, Star Citizen. Let's see what they Jesus have Christ, how long is this game going to be in development? But also, ain't they locking... Aren't they get, like, making people pay like a thousand dollars or something? I heard, I heard something about that. Jesus Christ, how long is Star Citizen being, being made?
What does that say? All footage captured in engine. Jesus Christ, you 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 need to squint your eyes to see that shit. I just want a space game that's going to get the bad taste of Mass Effect Andromeda out of my fucking mouth. That's what I need. I'm hoping Star Citizen can be it. If it's ever goddamn released. Well, that dude stood no chance. Isn't Mark... Mark Hamill is in this game. Or, or is that the one? Hold on. But the whole DLC stuff. Fuck my life. Jesus, a grand for fucking DLC? What the fuck did they think I am? Made of money? I ain't got no fucking money. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be able to pay that. I don't know, but it's probably gonna be about a thousand. It ain't gonna be a thousand dollars worth. Fuck my life. Alpha, alpha, fuck me. It's still an alpha. Coming up on the PC gaming show: all new gameplay footage of Just Cause 4. A closer look at The Walking Dead, the final season. All new gameplay footage of Hitman. Nice. Now your host, Sean Plot. And we're getting Overkill's Walking Dead As footage. We do each year at the PC Gaming Show, in addition to talking about games, we're also going to talk about some. Of Again, the like I say, if I can't jump into a tornado and just cause four, zero out of ten. Manager from Acer, it's Eric Ackerson. Thanks for joining me up here, Eric. Sean, really excited to be here. Now, I, I just want to straight up ask, what are the, some of the big trends that consumers can be expecting right now? Well, right now we're developing some new products, particularly in the display space. We want to take here we go. This is what I was talking about. This is going to be the hardware that is going to torture me because I'm not going to be able to get it. It's an incredible gaming display. For instance, it's 4K and 120 hertz refresh. The users can overclock to 144. But what, re what really takes it over to the next level is the inclusion of G-Sync HDR. Yeah, now I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it, but uh, for the purpose of this conversation, the fact that there are 384 individual backlit zones, so the backlighting and can speaking be of bad taste of Mass Effect Andromeda, really bright, very dark. It makes a, a better contrast on screen. Each of them are individually controlled. The brightness of the screen is far above a typical display. Typical, you're looking at 300 to 400 nits. We're looking at 600 with the Predator X27 with a max of 1,000. I don't, I don't know, Chris, you know, but you know, I'd, I'd love to know. Uh, just now, there's a wide variety of some photorealistic, <laughs> some with a really iconic art style. How does HDR just like, ping, to like a big range? We like a fucking ping pong well, ball. One of the big things that helps is the color gamut that's available with these displays. We're able to do 99% of the Adobe color gamut, so it's better representing the vision of the art director. Yeah, and some of the games that you see on screen that support HDR, Mass Effect, Andromeda, Far Cry 4, Nino Kuni 2. Uh, again, you won't see them in HDR right now unless you have an HDR monitor. It doesn't work that way. We can't just stream it to you. <laughs> exit strategy. You know, it <laughs> the, the, the ultimate of, of, the ultimate of getaways. <laughs> Pinged out of a fucking tornado. Totally. What are the different sort of products to look for at those that's how, that's how I'd do it. Well, I mean, we cover the, the gamut from uh, very simple and to the point to high performance esports products or multi-view surround multi-display products but we also go really crazy sometimes we decide oh shit have you seen your prices to the test what can you do if you have yeah, no yeah. limit so one of the projects we've worked on is something called the predator 21x this is a 21 inch curved screen uh, laptop with a mechanical keyboard how do you and close two it graphics cards yeah. science we have materials we did, we did science good thing. but you know what to, to be serious but not just to joke we actually have to ship this with a pelican case to protect the laptop and it sells yeah. for nine thousand dollars and we sold every single oh shit i can't buy so we cover and again i'd just be happy to game. upgrade my fucking you know, you gpu this predator laptop you brought up the predator monitors at the start of this segment where can people go to hear more about or even pick one up once they stop being sold out so the that's the good news is that we're shipping now our customers partners are selling them the bad news is a few have already sold out of this new predator X27 monitor. I believe Micro Center is still in stock. Amazon will be in stock again soon. Well, thank you so much all right, for joining well, me on stage. That's for all you Eric, fuckers with money. Frankie is awaiting in the balcony with our very next title.
The PC has always been the platform for crazy ideas. In our next game, Genesis Alpha 1, you build and manage a space vessel, farm resources, deal with terrifying alien infestations, and explore a vast, randomly generated universe. Oh, and she you just described No Man's Sky, or what No Man's Sky wishes with it was. members of your crew to create new life forms. Just a typical day at the office. Let's take a look. Greetings, Commander. You have been sent to Quadrant Alpha 1. The mission is to find a new home for the crew on board of this ship. Expand your ship and explore the galaxy for resources and interesting new life forms. Feel free to experiment with DNA and alien abilities to maximize crew efficiency. Ooh. Ready your weapons. Ooh, you might have me sold here. This looks interesting. I want to. I want to hear more about GTFO, uh, the game from some of the DX developers of uh, uh, Payday. Oh shit! It's coming out this year. Uh, Genesis Alpha One. Okay. Uh, give me a sec. Now, if you didn't catch the pre-show quiz, you might be wondering who my buddy is. Well, this, the ladies fuck? and gentlemen, is Webster from Drake's Cakes, one of the PC gaming show sponsors this year. And he's got a cool competition for you. The Drake's Cakes Packs Giveaway. Oh, yes. Packs what the is fuck? a gathering of PC and tabletop games, concerts, panels, exhibits, and... Oh, Packs West. It's, it's, it's a fucking... Board, a it's an advert for Packs. workshop and concert rolled into one. You fucking Americans so with all your cons. The winner will enjoy a trip to Packs West. I can't. I, go, I want to go to your cons. And a free trip to Seattle. So if that's you, hit me up on those dates, because I am free. Webster, my man duck, this is very generous of you indeed. And by entering, guys, you will get a discount code to get your hands on some delicious Drake's cakes available on Amazon. And if you're Stop, free, I'm hungry Webster enough as it is. You can meet Webster in person at the E3 Concourse Walkway, where he'll be giving away Drake's swag and tasty treats all week. So if you see him, give him a fist bump on my behalf. I'll take hate one you all. Thank you very much. I hate you all. So if you have ever dreamt of spending a weekend knee deep in one of Earth's best gaming festivals, visit PCGamer.com. You have my sympathies, Mecca. I apologize. And enter now for a chance to win and hang out with Webster. All right, Webster, all this hosting has got me a bit peckish. How about we look at a trailer for the next edition of Clay Entertainment's beloved survival series, Don't Starve, Hamlet. Holy shit, more Don't Starve. Fucking love the art style of this game as well. <laughs> Go for the eyes. I love the art style, but this game is depressing as hell. Come on, man, that's some free bacon right there. You won't starve. Big giant moose, and that's it. Okay, now, that they just look like the goddamn piranha plants from fucking Mario. Don't starve, Hamlet. This is like the third one. Yeah, don't starve, don't starve together in there. Don't starve, Hamlet. In a series that never fails to make me laugh, it's just cause four, and they have a brand new engine to bring the level of delicious insanity one notch up. Let's take a look at what the Apex engine in Just Cause Four can really do. Yeah, this should be interesting. This is now you're about to see why I say I really wish you, you could just parachute inside of a uh, parachute uh, out of a volcano or into a volcano, and why I say it's a zero out of ten if you can't. Because honestly, it does look it does look really nice. Unrivaled draw distance, which means it's gonna murder my fucking GPU, and probably murder most of your GPUs as well.
increase fidelity of construction. Yeah, you can blow shit up in higher fidelity. There we go. Now you see in the background. That that is my fucking sticking point with this game. Watch this. That's why I want to know if you can parachute out of a fucking volcano. Joining me to talk about it on stage now from Avalanche Studios, it's Francesco and, or excuse me, Francesco Antolini and Adam Davis. Well, hold on, time Welcome. to make gaming machines Talk out of the cryptocurrency miners. <laughs> Yeah, the That's fuckers the took all of our GPUs, so, so we're gonna uh, make them into our fucking nice, uh, GPUs. It's not just that makes no sense. Thanks to Apex, it's also a bit boy that actually works. It's fully physicalized. Yeah. This means that it's roaming the world, wreaking havoc, and uh, it's not. It's not just like a background piece. It's no, actually impacting no, no. the world. This is you. just cause, man. You go there and you play with it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, throughout the trailers that I've seen, it seems to be a lot of different environments that are available throughout. Can you talk to me about those? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the most important things to us with this installment of Just Cause was bringing a lot more variety into the game, and that extends to a lot of things, but certainly the biomes of the game. So instead of one kind of region of, like, say, southern Italy, like we had last time, now you have lush rainforests, deserts, uh, grassland, Makes sense and even to me, and biomes, a twisted evil uh, madman sort of way. All rendered beautifully with the new <laughs> Now, something that's very important they to took me, our GPUs, so we will make GPUs out of them. Three. Can you talk to me about, like, the wingsuit and the grappling hooks? Like, are those coming back in Just Cause 4? Oh, yeah. Everything you love from Just Cause 3 is better. Oh, the funniest thing I saw in this trailer, yeah. you... It was in a, one of the other conferences. More to do, more to discover. For example, you can actually tie two cars together and crush work. enemies between uh, them. The combat model has been completely reworked, redesigned, enhanced, or new mm -hmm. weapon, new enemies, uh, new AI. Uh, we've got extreme weather that yeah. interacts with I mean, grappling hook does, and yeah, uh, parachute. Right? The wind that we saw from yes. the tornado, is it just yes. like basic wind effects also get incorporated as well? Again, it just goes, so nothing, just an effect. So if there is wind, it's physics, and acts with your parachute, grappling hook. So and, and there is, yeah. Well, where can people go to get some, we'll call it first-hand footage of what Just Cause 4 can deliver? Uh, they can check it out at justcause.com forward slash E3 uh, for three days. That's right. Believe it or not, E3 hasn't started yet. <laughs> Starts tomorrow, so yep. June 12th through 14th, you can check it out. Thank yeah, so and tomorrow's the last day, and I uh, only need to fucking stream Nintendo. Four. Now, our next title is one of my all-time favorite IPs. I can't wait for Frankie to talk to you about The Walking Dead. Here we go. This is going to be the final season of the Telltale one. Are the creators of Payday and Payday 2. Yes! Therefore, it goes without saying that these studios are some of the most talented makers of cooperative shooters. And their next one is set in a familiar but new apocalyptic Washington, D.C. Come on, give it Here's to me. Here's the first gameplay footage for Overkill's The Walking Dead. Yes! And keep your eyes peeled for the release date at the end. Ooh! Yes! Sorry, this is the one I've been excited for. Fucking Overkill's The Walking Dead. Oh, fucking gameplay. Show me some fucking gameplay, motherfuckers. Overkill, you're a bunch of assholes when it comes to all the goddamn DLC for Payday 2, but my god, you can please win me back with this. We were so many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers, writers and architects. But when the world ended, all that ended too. It would fu I would fucking laugh if it's released on t June 26th, my fucking birthday. We fight to build a new life. If this gets released on my fucking birthday, I'm gonna be mad. That's a lot of zombies. Or walkers. November 6th? November 8th? Ooh! That, oh my god, it's coming! Fucking free all this month, fuck you. And fuck I have life. more good news for fans of The Walking Dead. Overkill's game for The Walking Dead, of course, coming soon, but we have a second completely different uh, Walking damn, Dead. Damn, it's coming out this year. To talk about I am right actually now. looking forward to that. This is Telltale's The Walking Dead, the final season. 
Joining me on stage to talk about it is the lead writer, James Windler, and the voice of Clementine herself, Melissa Hutchison. I'm actually surprised this is going to be the final chapter. Oh, the final hey, season, that my is. Pleasure. Thank you. Now, I, I want to ask right away for, you know, people who've played through the first three seasons of The Walking Dead, in terms of the gameplay, what's some of the familiar and what's some of the new? Okay, so for people who don't know Telltale, um, we are a story-based company. Um, we do, we focus on narrative. Uh, we've had our roots in... Who thinks um, Clementine dies the, in the end? The old school point and click adventure games, but we've developed our own cinematic style. Gonna, gonna, gonna and, get a, a one um, if you think she's gonna die, or a two if you think she's gonna survive uh, yeah. um, final season. And that's, that's all familiar. Um, that should, you know, the choices branch the narrative. Um, what's new this year, we have, um, like, traditionally, like, combat and action, um, we've done with QTEs and, yeah, yeah, like, like, swipes and, and button mashes and all of that. This year, um, with the final season, we're, we're um, introducing uh, segments of unscripted combat. Yeah, see, we see some of this right here. Yeah, hmm. so Clem probably just brutalizes the zombie there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Of course she is. And you, oh yeah, so we also have like the um, the orbital cam, like the over the shoulder camera. Um, so that's yeah. like offering our players um, uh, opportunities to explore our environments, which you can also see from the B, the B roll. Right. Um, is like they're looking really, really good oh, with this yeah. graphic bla um, graphic black art style that we're employing. Yeah, because in the previous games it was much more of a directed camera from scene to scene, but now you can really sort of explore the environment on your own. Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. Now I want to ask about the story. I mean, Telltale games always have that as the central feature. Where does The Walking Dead, the final season, start off? Okay, so it starts, um, we've, you know, Clementine has been on the road for a long time. We are post time jump in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, she's been on the road, she's traveling um, with a, a AJ, who is an orphaned boy, yeah. um, who is the closest thing that she has to family. Um, but they're reaching the end of it. They are like running out of steam on the road. It's like proving to be untenable. Um, so, um, the Those final season, Clementine uh, discovers a, a, a school, a secluded school, um, where there are no adults, um, and essentially sees that this might be a place that they could call home. Yeah, because yeah, sort of that wouldn't be a terrible idea. Oh, all kinds no of adults. Challenges. Have you yeah. ever seen like Law of the Flies? All the time. Tough. Yeah, of course. Um, and then there's always the external threat. Like, the, uh, at some point, there are going to be adults coming in um, representing external threats that she's going to have to deal with. Now, Melissa, I, I want to ask what your experience has been like, because it's rare to have, you know, a, a voice actress journey along with yeah. a character in a multi-year journey. I mean, how long ago was the first uh, it was, recording that you did? Well, I, it was 2012, but we might have even started in 2011. I don't know. I'd... We're not going to do math on it. Yeah, That's we're not always doing a math. bad idea. That's not happening right now. Um, it's been a long time, and it's not only just playing one character, it's actually been aging with her, growing with her, and... Uh, falling deeper and deeper in love with her. And, hey, mad uh, respects to anybody who, who sticks with a character for that damn long, then. You know, as playing as Lee, it's your job to protect her and then organically moving through all these seasons. And now yeah. you're playing as Clementine. I mean, really, this is a fan-driven game. Is, so this the only the person final I, season I, I, is for the fans. And I can't think know, of anybody else who's actually Clementine done that. Well, I mean, AJ there's been people and, that, do, uh, that have done that, but I'm talking like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, to yeah, actually yeah, evolve with the character the, uh, as well. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's bittersweet. I'm super sad. I'm super psyched. Uh, you know, I'm, of course, it'll, it'll be sad to end her journey. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm really looking forward. Obviously, I'm surrounded by talent with Telltale Games. And I have no doubt that the writers and the creatives are going to crush it. So... Sad but happy. It's all very confusing. I'm a very confused shot and twist. Human Clementine right ends up showing up in the Walking Dead TV show. Through all of the Telltale Walking Dead games, I'd okay. love to know when the final season is coming out. August 14th. Um, yeah, we ship August 14th, and it's available for pre-order right now. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for joining me on stage right, cool. today. Once again, that's, that's the that for all you Telltale fans. Or you can find it on Steam as well. For our next title, Frankie, we're going to head back to you on the balcony. Next up, have I got a treat for you. Coming straight out of Finland from Nola Games is a magical action roguelike that asks, is that a wand in your pocket? Are you just trying to kill me? 
Don't let the retro art style fool you. Noita is set in a procedurally generated world where every pixel is... He went from okay to now fucking cringe-worthy at this point. Ah. More, more pixel art games. These really ain't dying anytime soon, are they? They're, they're, they're really not, are they? I mean, I'm sure that I'm, I'm absolutely sure. I mean, I can appreciate pixel art uh, as much as the next person. Jesus Christ. Weirdly enough, I saw that explosion. Instantly, I thought of worms. Like, worms Armageddon. Nautia. A Nautia. Our next title is one that's very near and dear to my heart, as it is the spiritual successor to one of my favorite childhood games, Theme Hospital. Joining me to talk about it are the two founders of Two Point Studios. To talk about Two Point Hospital, yeah. join me in Graphics welcome Dr. Dr. Lemmings. and Dr. Carr. Yeah, I, I can see that. Oh, Jesus Christ, they're coming in white coats. Wow. Great suits. I mean, I gotta ask, as two fully trained medical professionals, how does one run a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Whoa, what's going on with the bike? What's going on with the bike? What's going on with the bike? Wait, oh my gosh, is the stethoscope eliminating your microphone? Ow. Oh, you know what? We do this every year. Come here, talk to me. Okay. How do we run a hospital? So Two Point Hospital is a game about designing and uh, building your own hospital. It's yeah. In, uh, <laughs> talk directly at my tie. Talk, yeah, <laughs> yes. you said, Don't talk into my here. tie. I've got to look out here, you said. Yeah, no, just look so, straight at the ground. There's a lot of customization. <laughs> there's... Is this not working at all? Yeah, it's great. Uh, doing great. Can you carry, carry on? on? I'll carry on then. Uh, yeah, a lot of customization, a lot of interesting characters in our world, which uh, with all these different characters. Well, yeah, I actually really really appreciate how they made a joke of it. And cures for them. And uh, you have fun in Two Point County exploring different regions and curing people with different Oh, that person's about to get probed. As you can see there on the screen, is. we've got... So this is real. We actually uh, researched this. It's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima. And also you can train people... Uh, you can uh, train your doctors to be better, your nurses to be better. Do research. Hey, it is even like uh, theme hospital, isn't it? Cures. Yeah. You know, saying everything. But like it's you say, it's a spiritual like, success. Right. So it looks a bit what? Yeah. So I mean, no, no. Tell me about it. Like, what is the sort of late game, yeah. uh, sort of experience that you'll be playing through? Because this looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital. Yeah. This is later on. So uh, you start off. Okay. Now this mic's working. You know, now finally, no feedback. Researching and you're you're training up staff. You're diagnosing illnesses, and uh, you're hopefully curing them and making money, and then yeah. getting off. I see this to, to malady. Yeah, I see this malady called turtle head. Can you explain oh, yes. a little bit about what yeah. that is? Yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's when the head becomes so oh, yeah. shrunken, it gets <laughs> stuck in the neck orifice, just pops out slightly, and uh, it has to be uh, extracted. And uh, Mark, how, how's yeah, it getting extracted? Yeah, well, this is uh, something you've... <laughs> what the fuck? Maybe, uh, we've, all had, we've all been there, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, know uh, you know, a little bit of suction always helps. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and out it comes. Yeah. Now, we had to research how to do that. That's actually a, a real illness. For yeah, it is. It's real. Now, I, I had to ask about something that I think every young man has to deal with at some point. What, what is a monobrow infestation? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so am I. I like the humor. Is, you know, Follically enhanced, enhanced yeah, so yeah. problem. We've, We've all seen, been there. Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't. No, but, okay. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, it needs to be diagnosed and cured pretty quickly. If it doesn't, it'll fester. And uh, you might shed uh, a bit of hair, and in fact, it, and it can, screen. it will actually leave the body, and it needs to be got rid of uh, before yes. the health inspectors arrive. It looks like the monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they breed very, yeah, they're big breeders. The monobrows, yeah, they like, yeah. mono beasts. Uh, they like Sentient the monobrows. Uh, what the fuck? Disgusting. So you've got to keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to breed. You'll have a I want to ask about sort of how the game evolves over time. You know, the hospital was very mission-based. How yeah. does the experience of running a hospital change as the game goes on? 
Yeah, so once you've started your first hospital, it's, you know, it's a pretty simple affair. And then I absolutely really like the humour of that game. County. There's different regions, there's a cold region, there's warm regions with uh, in fact, you know, contagious diseases. And, you know, there's... There's poor there's regions, there's rich well. regions. Yeah. yeah. So we've got volcanoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've, we've got, got all sorts of wonderful... Uh, to point hospital, to was it? So it might struggle to manage your hospital empire because yeah. a volcano went off nearby. Yeah, it's about spinning plates, isn't it? You've got everything set up nicely and then... Something happens. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'd love to know more information mm -hmm. about when Two Point Hospital... Yeah, Two Point Hospital. Out. Well, we're coming up to fall and uh, you can check us out by going onto our Steam page and hopefully wish listing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're coming later in the year. We're told to say. No. <laughs> Why is this giving well, me flashbacks to really kids next door? I have Thanks no goddamn idea. Hi, Mecca. I have no fucking idea. Two point hospital. <laughs> now, Christ. our second battle royale game of oh, the Jesus. afternoon takes a fantasy Christ. RPG esque bet. There we go. You may have even seen it getting streamed on Twitch in the previous week. Let's take a look at High Res's Realm Royale. Oh, wow. High Res. Oh, uh, here's more Battle Royale for you people. Battle Royale with, pla with powers. Joining me to talk about Realm Royale is the executive producer at High Res Studios. It's Rory Nubro. I mean, what, what can you say? It's just another Battle Royale game. Right. You know what? I will be right back because this seems Realm like it's going to go on until 1 o'clock. So I'll be right back. I want to see if I can get a goddamn so coffee. you go up into the air to determine where you land on the map, you'll actually choose from a list of fantasy classes like mage or hunter or assassin and specify a unique play style before you land. Uh, how do these different classes work? So the engineer will be more about bunkering down, putting up shields, putting down turrets. The assassin will get behind the lines using stealth, use a sniper rifle to take out targets. Yeah. And the warrior will just jump in there throwing axes and being crazy. And, you know, in some of the streams that I've watched, it also seemed like there were abilities, not just the loot and find stuff. Can you talk to me about how the ability mechanics work? Once you choose a class, it'll come with a set of abilities, and you'll actually be upgrading these during the match, but it specifies your oh, play yeah. style. And so as you're looting, abilities as well as armor and weapons will come out of the chest. Okay. You'll start equipping that and determining the play style you want, and so you can just really specify. And, you know, you, you mentioned this a little bit. I've seen it on stream. Talk to me about crafting in the game. I mean, how does crafting work in a game where there's a constantly shrinking play circle? We're really excited about this. So strewn across the map, there are places called forges. And so once you go to the forge, you'll collect shards from disenchanting loot you find as you're going about. And you'll use these shards to start crafting legendary gear, very powerful pieces that everyone will want. Yeah. Once you start the forge, a smokestack will appear above the forge, and everyone comes over to it's like fight. like a mini objective, even. Big team fight. So, okay, I'm sorry, I'm back, and we lost more audience. God damn it. On Steam. Integrity, Here, that's awesome. Some goodies that people can check out that are E3 exclusive. That's right. So, free on Steam, we're actually out for less than a week now, and we were already number four on Steam charts. And this week at, at E3, through Mixer, if you stream on Mixer and you're playing, the streamer that gets closest to the Crown Royale will enter into the hype zone, and so everyone will see you on, you'll be featured on the main page of Mixer, and you'll have a chance to win the Jailbird Chicken Skin, which is our first piece of So what, what did I miss? It's is it a just a typical, like a uh, I have to watch like, this yeah, back, I'm sorry, it was, an, it was a Battle Royale and I just didn't care. Yeah, and if you don't know the chicken, and I need to please look it up right now. Rory, thanks so much for joining me on stage to talk about Realm Royale. Once thanks, again, sir. it's for free on Steam right now. Our next game is one that was shown at last year's PC Gaming Show, and Frankie has some updates of what they've been up to. Yes, Sean, awesome. as you may remember, our next game is made by a core team of just two people. It's called Ooblets, and it's a farming and creature collecting indie inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing. This fresh trailer That's features a first look at their unique uh, combat system, there. along with plenty of cute Ooblets and environments. Let's take a gander. gander. You know, that face there, that's the face that has seen the fucking abyss. That, 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 that face has seen the fucking end of days.
Ah, oh, sure. This, this is just... Oh my god, they grow. You fucking plant them. Please tell me you get to... Oh, what the fuck? That grinder looked like you could fucking grind these little things. That is horrifying. Fucking awesome. Exactly. That that looks like they'd easily and quickly take over the human war, the human race, and now, enslave us to create more. It wouldn't be a PC gaming show without a dash of strategy, which is why I'm delighted that we get the chance to share with you the next in the Anno games. Let's take a look at Anno 1880. Ah, oh, fucking Ubisoft. Fuck's sake! Now I got to get that stink off of me. For a second there, I thought it was going to be steampunky. Steampunkish. This this conference is going on uh, till one o'clock in the morning, which would leave me an hour for uh, Sony's. I didn't see much to get Joining excited about, really. To talk about it is the executive producer Burkhart Ratheiser and community developer Bastian Thun. And the crowd went mild. Gentlemen, welcome to the stage. I want to begin right away by asking, you know, for people who haven't seen or experienced the Anno series, what are these types of games like? Yeah, well, uh, Anno 1800 is um, a PC um, only um, real-time strategy game. And um, it's kind of uh, mixing um, uh, city building together with um, economic simulation mm -hmm. and naval warfare. And at its core, it's, um, it's a sandbox game. So um, you have a, a, free, um, a vast amount of freedom yeah. to explore um, to um, explore the world and build huge cities. And I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit about why the choice of the 19th century for this game. Well, the 19th century, is, it's such an interesting and rich era that um, mm -hmm. there was so much um, um, happening in this era. It's the industrial so age, wasn't it? We had uh, two um, industrial revolutions. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. had uh, major scientific inventions um, uh, and uh, also big social changes and also the, great, the creation of the big imperial empires. So it's yeah. a really rich era. And what are some of the elements that we'll get to see from the 19th century in Anno 1800? So it's, it's kind of for the player, it's uh, well, basically you start with the first. Um, Kind of medieval settlements, yeah. and then it's a kind of kind but of. A will there be enemy the NPCs? Century. Are we just so building? Kind of you explore everything that kind of happened in, the, yeah. in this rich era. And I understand that you have a very unique take on how to work with the community, how to gather feedback. I was wondering if you could talk to me about what is Anno Union. So last year at Gamescom, when we actually revealed the game, we decided on, you know what, it's pre-alpha, revealed the game. We invited the community to basically become a part, a member of our, of our uh, development team. So we launched our Anno Union platform. It's a place where we give constant weekly uh, updates on the current yeah. development and invite players to give feedback and basically help us develop. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Can you give me like an example of exactly how some choices have been steered by the community? So there's a lot of different stuff we did. So like from uh, the feedback we got on our blog. I mean, I originally was getting a Civ vibe, a Civ vibe. We got so much great it, feedback, uh, which had to completely rebalance the mid and no. late game of uh, uh, the game. Also, we heavily uh, expanded. It led. That means there is going to be enemy, MP, uh, enemy like, okay, civilizations. It re really uh, seems to work. Players like that. So okay. Let's do it, like, uh, improve the quality a little bit even more. Yeah. But um, they can also vote on actual game content. So we had a big vote for an AI opponent in the game, yeah. for a community creation contest where they could create their own island and stuff like this. And, and I understand that some of this uh, footage that you're sharing right now is 
pieces that people can go to anno-union.com and vote on right now. Exactly. So right, just in a fucking flamethrower boat. You can go to anno-union.com. Fuck, I'd be all over that shit. Out. We have a vote up where you can vote on one of five ships in the game. And that's only the first stage, because in the second stage, we will allow you to design your own ship variant. So the winner of that uh, first vote, then you can design, hand in your own design. Notes, that would be an artillery models, ship. Whatever you like. And the winner of that contest will actually make it into the game. Now, where is the website yeah. people can go to again to get the, Here's the most thing. information? If I could right build one, it would just yeah, be just a big giant artillery ship, which is just com. a big giant a artillery battery on a giant ship. Especially strategy gamers, PC players yeah. out there to come help us developing the game, sharing Free feedback, fire, just check fire. it out. Oh. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on stage to talk about Anno 1800. Our next title is the final battle royale of the night, and Frankie is going to be talking about it, and it's a little bit... Maybe not what you'd expect. Uh -huh, I'm sure. I just realized I didn't change the scenes. Sorry about that. Discovering distinctive indie developers and bringing their quirky ideas to the fore. With Cluster Truck, Speedrunners, and Hello Neighbor among their catalog of hits. And now I'm. The developers of Speedrunners is making a battle royale. Exclusive reveal of a game developed by Galvanic Games in cooperation with Explosion. Inspired by the cyanide and happiness webcomic, Rapture Rejects is battle royale as you've never seen one before, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. Cyanide and happiness. Isometric, cartoony, and basically bonkers. Let's take a look at what happens when the man upstairs makes an epic fail and only beams up the bad people. Introducing Rapture Rejects. Okay, you have actually caught my attention. A battle royale has captured my attention. Show me. Danny Miller's version. Dear God, every day I strive to be closer to your light. I pray that when Judgment Day, that most holiest of days, comes upon us, when you bring all the good people to heaven, that I may live in eternal glory by your side. Amen. Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. No, cyanide and happiness. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so, do you know when I was talking earlier about how the Battle Royale genre, you need something that stands out? That's what the fuck I'm talking about. We got to show that trailer. That's so great. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. That stands out. Our that looks funny game as fuck. That we will be showcasing this evening is from. Perhaps the most famous stealth action franchise in gaming, the Hitman series. Let's take a look at a brand new trailer from Hitman 2. There we go. And it's now being uh, published by uh, uh, Square Enix. Uh. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race Please is don't be episodic. And it is down to the wire. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox. A day of high octane thrills and two very public targets. I fucking love it, man. Like I said, I just hope it's not fucking episodic like the last time they attempted this. And you can beat a motherfucker with a fish. 
Amber the coconut. Yeah, he's coming out this year as well. Fucking hell. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be episodic. It looks like it's just going to be a full game. Fucking hell, fine, huh? Will we get me to talk about Hitman 2 is game director from IO Interactive, Jacob Mickelson. Join me up here, Jacob. Come on out. We got to talk. Assassination. Hey, Sean. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks for joining me. I mean, right away, tell me, what is Agent 47 doing in Miami? Well, he's there to uh, yeah, pay a visit to Sharon Robert Knox, who uh, part of the Kronstadt uh, Empire. And yeah, we all know how that ends, right? Oh yeah, she's dead. <laughs> well, they always die. Hitman game, I have some hints. I know, and right? I always felt like in the Hitman games, the environment was so critical, trying to study and trying to understand it. What are some of the elements in Miami that will show up in Hitman 2. Yeah, well, absolutely. Miami is, uh, I think it's one of the biggest events we've ever created in, in the game. And uh, in Miami, we have, of course, the race as the centerpiece. Yeah. But being this super biggest high event. detail sandbox, we also go to great lengths to actually create all the surrounding uh, bits and pieces, uh, like you have here, backstage area. Of yeah. course, we also have that in Miami. So pits and paddocks. Okay, and he just said the room, biggest so event. So the That's got me worried. In order for you to kind of make your own way through the yeah. mission and take advantage of the locations and all the different disguises and items you stumble upon as you yeah. move in closer to your targets. And in terms of the mechanics, I know that there's going to be a lot of the familiar feels, but what are some of the brand new mechanics that are in Hitman? Yeah, some of the new stuff is, uh, for instance, uh, the crowds we saw so here in Miami. Uh, yeah. First of all, there's more than ever. Yeah, uh, huge. There's, we're close to 2,000 people now in the scenes. And, uh, nice. Uh, on top of that, we also introduced a new crowd mechanic where you, uh, you can dip into the crowd if you get in trouble. So as long as they are not mm -hmm. uh, fleeing or running away, then they're there for you to hide in. So in case you get chased by guards. Open camouflage, ladies and gentlemen. And the thing is the picture, picture uh, mechanic where you get information right. about what's going on other places in the level. So if you're setting up traps and stuff like that, you can kind of keep track of where the important characters are. Uh -huh. And last, uh, I mean, it's like it's going to be too the, easy. The fan favorite, right? Which is the sniper briefcase uh, is back, but this time it's not only for for sniper rifles, it's also for all the other things you want to carry around, kind of without causing too much attention to yourself. And I want to ask about some of the weapons and the disguises that have been showing up throughout these trailers. Yeah, we go to great lengths. I think the the, the theme of uh, of this showing is going to be the fish. It's really uh, it's a studio favorite. Uh, we the goddamn we're fish. A lot of laughs. Uh, yeah, that right, and then. <laughs> And then, of course, you just saw it in the kitchen. There's a frying pan, so we all know the kitchen is the most dangerous house, uh, room in your house, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so of course. Also counts. Uh, in my house. My room. I, I want to ask about some of my favorite content from Hitman, things like elusive targets, limited time events. Will those be making a comeback? Absolutely. So there's still going to be escalations for you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Uh, there's going to be uh, challenge packs, uh, mm -hmm. again, new challenge for you. And then, of course, the elusive targets that pop up for a short period of time only. And you have one shot at this or yeah, oh, yeah. robust. I like There's that a idea. Final I, I mean, there's a lot of question. concepts from the first when Hitman does game. Two come out? That are two comes really out. good. November, 3rd, November 13, and if you pre And I'm right glad now, they're revisiting them. A new game mode called Sniper Assassin, where you get to play as Agent 47, and also, for the first time in the franchise, you can play along with a friend in the co op mode. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for coming Again, out. I have to ask, he to said Hitman an too. event. Does that mean it's I'm still going to be released episodically, or is it going to be a complete now, Jacob, package? I'm going to thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to escort you off to the right. So you're going to rush off this way, because coming in from the left, for the first time ever, vaguely nearby me, it's the co-host Frankie. Come here, Frankie. They let me come down from the balcony for good behavior. Excellent. Uh -oh. Well, Frankie. We did it. We the did. PC Gaming Show is done. Thank you so much for joining us to host this year. That yeah, was Thank good. They you. actually showed a lot of games. Thanks and for all of you who came like to the Will Turn and joined us today. Um, it was a blast. Four, Thanks to Twitch. Seven Chat, games shown that I'm really interested in. And intelligently thought out. <laughs> and of course, this year we're curating even more great PC games from the Facebook booth in E3 South Hall. No, last eight. The and Rapture course, one actually had me interested. A huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors who let the PC Gaming Show come back for a fourth straight year. They are 
High Res Studios, Digital Extremes, Archangel Hellfire, Team 17, Stardock Entertainment, Acer, Predator, Improbable, Oculus Rift, Drake's Cakes, Tripwire, Frontier Developments, and Square Enix. We hope you have a wonderful That's a lot of goddamn sponsors to make sure they could have an event. Video games. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> All right, so that was the uh, PC gaming uh, conference, and holy shit, uh, I really did not think it would go on that that long. I'm not I'm not I'm not entirely complaining, but holy shit, it's literally an hour and ten minutes until the goddamn fucking uh, uh, PlayStation conference. So, god damn it! I feel like I'm gonna need to stand up and walk around because my ass has gone to sleep. So maybe I'll maybe I'll stay online until the conference is done, or until Sony comes up. But like, walk around and just talk to you guys. I mean, if you guys want to jump in Discord, I'm gonna jump in now. So if you guys want to uh, talk about anything that's been happening up to E3 so far, I will totally be up to be talking about it uh the if you're on youtube or twitch at the moment you can type in exclamation discord to join the discord and simply go into the waiting area i will see you and i will drag you in so we can talk about some random shit and some stuff that has been going on in uh e3 so far well apparently e3 doesn't start till tomorrow so just the conferences All right, see you later, America. Have fun. All right, then. Have a have a fabulous night, Chris. Because I don't want to lose the potential audience that uh, Mar Marcos had brought me, so I think it'd probably be safe to keep streaming and just restart the stream when the Sony one starts. Holy crap. Ooh. Uh, you can't tell I'm actually very, very, very fucking tired. <laughs>